Hello, let's make the visor mask holder. This is 10 inches by 15 inches. It does have a pretty fabric, a liner, and interfacing. Of course, follow the directions for your interfacing. You can use sewing interfacing as well as iron-on. Do what works best for you. I have on this iron-on interfacing. No, I don't know what kind because I found it in the remnant section at Joann's. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to measure down when we're holding it we're going to measure down so we want to create our flap of course and this is going to be the bottom end because this is directional i have my wolf here i want him at the bottom so this is where my elastic is going to be this is going to be the top i do need to have my flap here and i want that to be at least an inch and a half so i want to measure down and I have this teeny tiny little template. I cut it out and I want to just mark it where I need it to be. This is my example. This is the first one I made. So this is what where we're at. We're doing this tabby thing. It's here, but I actually want it a little lower. So I think I have it exactly where I want it to be. Of course, we're going to center this up. And how do I center it up? I simply fold in half. Pinch it a little to find my center mark. Move this over where I believe the center is. Of course, just, just kind of dilly-dallying it about. And there's no direct. It's not going to be perfect, y'all, but it's going to be close to what we want it to be. This little piece of chalk, I am just marking out my circle. Once I do this, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch it down. Yes, all three layers. One and then two with the interfacing i'm going to just go around this circle be right back i sewed down the circle but i still think it's a little high i'm not going to worry about it though at this point in time that is something we need to i need to work on very specifically because of course i always haphazardly do any project i'm working on i am going to cut out this circle now so i did do just a slit in it I, it's all willy-nilly i'm not too concerned about where or why now i have my pinking shears and i am just going to pinky around the circle and uh, for me i love the pinking shear method just because it helps it lay better and i find these very therapeutic <laughs> i know odd ducky so as we're doing this, going through, I'm just trying to perfect this. So this is actually the fourth time I've made this. Uh, the first one was okay. The second one was better. The third one is where I'm like, yep, okay, this is it. This is what we want to do. Or nearly, I mean, of course, we'll perfect it the more we do. And who knows? I'll do it a couple of times and then we'll move on. Well. It's just the way life goes right just snipping off those tiny bits once you get to this point we're going to pull this out uh, the right way right side out of course we're getting rid of all the fluff and stuff that has made its little way into our project we're going to just pull this through here i go here i go here i go here i go pulling it through yes that's what we want to see. We're going to match up our corners here. Um, putting a little stress on it. We're going to just finger press it along as we're going. Going, 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 going. I am going to give it a quick press just to secure and kind of swoosh these, these little um, rounded corners down. Once I do that, I am going to top stitch it just to secure it like permanently to where it's at because we are going to be putting stress on it while we're pulling out our mask as needed because this is intended to be on the visor look how cute that is so uh once we do that then we're going to go well i'm going to top stitch it we'll be right back okay i have it sewn down stitched down just to secure that the next thing we want to do is we want to close out this raw edges the easiest way i found to do this and still have 
the impact and the look we want is just to fold it down about a quarter of an inch and we're going to do the whole thing from one end to the other and we're going to of course do the other side as well we're going to just fold it under give it a quick press and top stitch it down closed we're going it's going to help make our ends clean and it's going to help make the envelope portion of this particular piece so this is what it was and then i fold it in the edges so it could be um have like this tapered edge because i want this to be on the inside thus creating there so i'm not too concerned about how it really looks but of course we want to be consistent with it so let's do it they are ironed down about a quarter of an inch give or take um yeah i'm not a very exact teacher but look how that is going to be we're going to zip along and we'll do the next step hooray super de duper cute on the other edge i know this doesn't seem a little bit odd decky and that's okay so here we are we're going to fold this in here already and just we're going to pull it back we want to see these and this is the easiest way to close this out you do need to find your elastic at this point and we want to go two and a half inches inward so i'm going to put it here to the measuring uh, numbers here and two and a half inches in seems to be a good fit i'm gonna mark it well it's on the orange one two half so i'm marking it so i know where two and a half inches is i'm gonna get my elastic and insert it here at the bottom the elastic i'm doing that six inches long so you need two i'm gonna do 12 inches and cut in half that seems to be work for me and this is for the visor so that way it's snug but yet uh, not too tight not too loose just depending on your visor so I'm assuming they're all universal but we never know we never know laying it down of course if you need to get a pin or a clip we want to just secure it in that area of course go over your stitches a couple of times just to secure it in there just finding that that second marker we're just going to go straight down it it allows us to put it in there without actually having to be really um having too many overlaps so if we can do multiple tasks in one task that's perfect it's how we like to work work smarter not harder and now we're just going to straight stitch of course droop, 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 right here on your your points hooray we did it we did it now we're just going to pop it right back out and it's going to look clean on the top and on the bottom we have the clean edge here and now we have the clean edge here yes willy nilly but we are going to go back through there and just top stitch it down. I am not going to cut down the inter parts. It's just going to help create a little bit more stability in there. And now I'm going to top stitch here to here. Okay, we have it stitched down. I did do a, go a little wonky here. Not too worried about it. Now, this is the best part for this part. So... I do a little French seaming because I myself am not a fan of raw edges. It's just a personal preference. If you are okay with it, you can skip this and, and scoot to the next spot. But um, this is just the, how my preferred method. You guys do what works for you. These are annoying me, so let's cut those bad boys off. So <clears throat> what the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place this exactly where i want it to be if i'm thinking about it i folded it up i actually want it to be a little bit because this is the flap this is supposed to be on the back of the visor this is going to be to be um, right up on the visor this is going to come through and put be put in our elastic is going to be put here and this little flap is going to come right in there but i want it placed yeah i was a little still high on my circle so i should have swished it a little down it's not a big deal it's just something i know i need to be working on 
So make sure your placement is exactly where you want. Let's check this bad boy out. So this is at three inches. I actually want it at four. So it's a whole inch up from where I want it to be. Not going to fret on it. It's still going to work. I just kind of would have wanted it right here. So anywho, I'm not going to fret on it. I'm, I'm just going to leave it exactly how it is. Let's measure this. Let's do this at an inch and a half down. That works for me because that was about where we guesstimated our, our piece. Once we do this, I am going to just finger press these corners. And I am, for your, depending on how thick you want this part to be, I'm going to do it at, at a half an inch. So we need to cut out a half an inch here. How does that work? We're going to get our ruler here and I'm going to just mark it. Um, let me turn it a little sideways so we can both see this. It has markers on here. And I only want a half an inch. I don't want too much. Yes, I want to be safe and have mass. But it has the gauges. Let's do three quarters of an inch. Just on the fly. Let's figure this bad boy out. I'm going to just mark it. And we're going to cut those pieces out on both sides three quarters of an inch seems to be a good spot to do so marking it here marking it here we're going to cut them out once we cut them out we're ready to go back to the sewing machine and we are going to do our box bagging now i know we're thinking like there's a bit of raw edges we will have a tiny bit, but not enough to be concerned about. It will be on the inside of it. Yeah, we just want to be very purposeful when we're cutting these out. And don't fret if you make a mistake because we can still make, you know, pretty things out of things we deem as mistakes. And we work with it. We improvise. We make an allotment. We adjust. We Sometimes it comes out better than we thought just by cutting a little deeper a little longer i'm trying to be purposeful i don't want to over over cut my little stitch here there we go nice so we have these two cut out pieces it's looking rather nice i'm going to flip this over it's a little high but it's still going to be functional i'll give it away as a gift for sure for sure so the next thing we want to do is we just want to straight stitch these straight stitch the edges down but first the secret to closing out this edge would which would be raw if we did it we're going to tuck that bad boy in and cr create this tapered edge so when we straight stitch we're going to go from this end and zoop up and zoop over this is going to create our finished edge here while still encasing these so I'm going to put a clip on this because I do like how that looks. I'm going to put a clip right on there. And again, you want to see it again. We have our straight edge here. We have our marker here. So I'm going to put my finger and then we're just going to taper it in. And we can adjust this to how we like it. I like it just like that. So I'm going to grab this other clippy, stick it right on there. So when I'm ready to do that edge, it's just going to go zoom up and zoom over. Yay! It'll be nice. Okay, I'm just cutting it down close to the edge. Because we talked about French seaming. This is the only portion we're doing it on. So I cut a teeny tiny bit off. It's super close on both, both edges. We're going to pull this through. We want to see this part here finger yep that's okay we're not worried about that right now we're going to close that bad boy up so just pulling it through we're making sure not to go through i'm using my finger to just push on that without trying to we're going to uh, pull through i'm just trying to encase it right in the middle i can feel it you can see it like See that little tiny edge? That tells us where we, I want to sew. So I'm going to go back through and then straight stitch it down on both ends. From there, once we get that done, we're going to come back through and finish off that box bottom. We're going to finish off that box bottom and you'll see it come to where we want it to be. So let's, I'll be right back. 
Hooray! Look how cute that looks. It is top stitched down. We do have a little bit of flurries. We got to get cleaned up, but that's not a big deal. Right here. So now we still have our our elastic. So I'm gonna pull it through, trying to make sure it's just laying straight, so there's it doesn't curve. We're gonna pull it through this hole. Uh, where are you, elastic? Oh, there you are. When we do that, we're going to smash it down. I can see it. Hooray! We want to smash this down. Oh, sorry. We want to smash this down to have to adjust. Oh, I pulled it right back out. So, obviously, this takes a little bit of time to maneuver, which is okay. I'm glad I don't have to try to fight with time on this. I want to do it right, so... The effort I put into it will pay off. Hooray! Hooray! Now I'm going to shove it in there. I need to just see a tiny tip of it. Once I do this, I am okay. I am happy. And y'all, I'm still learning how to use YouTube. So I apologize if the frame is out of whack. I'm so used to doing it straight up. I forgot to turn the camera sideways and i'm not going to redo this again so anywho now we're just going to zoom i'm going to straight stitch and then i'm going to zigzag this is the only raw edges that should be on this piece so with the zigzag over it it should kind of clean it up and secure it we're going to do it to both sides be right back all righty y'all we got it all done let's do a little bit of cleanup work we can barely see a little bit of the elastic right there and that is that portion let's flip this around let's see this other side here we go just doing a little bit of tidying up trying to make sure we don't have any little flurries to be worried about there it is y'all there it is so that's what it looks like from the inside let's pull this bad boy out and see what it looks like from the outside uh adorable oh my gosh look at this it is so cute there we are there we are there we are adorable so this is going to be pressed up up against the visor if you have the snap tools great if you don't don't fret so you could use a uh, velcro if you wish you just want to tack this down a little bit in this particular section or where, however you deem necessary see what i mean about the circle we should i should have done it a little lower i'm not too concerned about it let me get some mass just give me a hot second i got a, a little bit here and it's it's a pretty hefty sum i don't know how much is in here and probably 25 or so let's throw those in there of course they're just cute as a button adding on the snap or whatever tool you would like to to do the enclosure you don't even actually have to do anything y'all see what i mean like if this was an inch lower it would be ideal but even still it still works like this pull it out there we go <laughs> It always wraps up on itself right here. I'm going to try to swish it out. So, anywho, there we are. We are done with our visor. Well, just about done. I'm going to put some snaps in there. So, let's just hang out for a hot second. I'll show you how I do that. So, I have a snap tool that I got at Joann's. I know exactly where I got it. And I more or less know where the center is just by eyeballing it. But let's double check. I'm going to just pull my two ends to the middle and just make sure. Feels comfy to me. And because it's a gift, I'm not going to be too concerned. I mean, of course, you always want to do fabulous, wonderful work uh, for anybody and everybody. But I can't find my owl thingy. I have my snaps here. And I have my snap tool here. But I just can't find this. Found it. I'm just going to poke a hole through here. There I go. I can see it there. Pulling it back out. Throwing that there. 
we are going to pull these out. And we need one, two, uh, a snapper, and then a holder. Nope, that's not the right size. That won't work. We need the bottom part. My kingdom. Okay, here we go. There we go. We have all the pieces we need. Putting those right back together. Let's do this. Have our hole here. I would like this to be on the outside. Putting it through. Wrapping a piece. Adding it, I'm going to grab our tool here. It does have a little cup at the bottom, and that's where we place it on the, the smashing it. And it smashes this little part here to secure it. I can't really pull it off now. Ray, this one, I want to do the snap on the inside. I mean, the flat piece on the inside and the holder carrier part on the outside. So I am going to put it in the little cuppy thing, smash it. It smashes that tiny center. Now I can fold it in. And we heard the snap. Hooray! That's how this is done. Of course, do what works for you. If Velcro works for you, if you want to do nothing and just kind of leave it willy nilly open, if I, we could even add a zipper that way we have to, we can eliminate the tab. So we'll just reduce our uh, piece by one and a half inches. Again, I encourage you to modify this to your best uh, version of it. Do what works for you. It's a little big but I don't mind I'd rather be have a little too big than too small and of course I just want to make that adjustment and go down four inches so this is a little bit more on the mass portion you saw how many masks we put in there there still is room of course if this is way too big you don't want it to be so bulky just reduce it reduce the length and if you don't like this particular portion let's see how far it ended up being one inch we cut it at three quarters of an inch and it ends up being one inch which makes sense because we sewed in about a quarter of an inch that makes perfect sense if you want it less cut less if you don't want it at all eliminate that step okay there we go all right y'all you know whatever you do do it well have a good day